preached 16 times if you'll study it out on hell. He preached one time on heaven. Emphasis on hell. You die without Christ, you go to hell. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you love your mom, your dad. If I love my mom and dad, if they, if, they, if they didn't get saved, they would be in hell. Thank God they trusted Christ. I had the privilege of leading my dad to Christ right before he died. He was a teenager. Thank God. Hey, that's the question. Doesn't matter what you got, what you think, what your opinion is. That's, none of this is going to matter in the end. It's going to be who made it and who didn't. Who made it and who did Just think, Ted Bonas watching this service now maybe. Walking, walking with the one that he prayed to for 68 years. The one he loved for 68 years. The one who he went out during the day, almost every day with us, and knocked on doors, told people about Jesus. The funeral's next uh, Saturday, I believe, at 1 o'clock, if you want to be here. Strange, strange, but that's all that matters. Are you saved? Okay. And then you go from there. And then you grow from there. Um, verse 6, 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 12. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth. Who's talking here? Anybody know? Paul, yes. Uh, as he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this one thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Have you ever had anything that you're going through that you asked the Lord to take away, but he didn't? That's what's going on right here. Okay. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, verse 9, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Wow, what a statement. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon him. Very, very, I don't think it's ever happened to me that somebody's come to me and said, wow, woo, can you believe it? Can you believe it? I got cancer, preacher. Woo, that's glorify, that's glory. Preacher, I lost my job. Preacher, I got to have surgery. No. But Paul wrote it in a book that lasts the ages for eternity. Ooh, that's the apex of being a Christian, I believe. If you can glory in your infirmities, that's tough to do. It's tough for me to do. I don't know about you. <clears throat> that's the difference between someone who quits and someone who just keeps going. Amen. Somebody who quits, all right, teaching or preaching, and, some, and somebody like John who keeps teaching Sunday school and other folks who just keep going, who keep going. Uh, that's the difference. And that's what we're going to preach on today. Uh, the fact that you can, you can fail without being a failure. Amen. You can fail, and you are going to fail. But you do not have to be a failure. And it's going to sound, this message is going to sound a little bit like coach talking to his football team. That's all right. We are like a football team. We're a family. All right, and we, we got a goal, we got, we got a job to do. Amen. Uh, that's why you're still here and God hasn't taken you home if you're saved. Amen. You got a job to do and you can't quit. Do not, do not quit. All right, let's bow our heads. Brother Fred, come pray for us. How many? She doesn't like that red one. We ask you, Lord, to please open up our hearts for that. Lord, open up our hearts to understand that so we can apply it onto our lives and we can go day by day 
knowing that uh, we, we have you to have control over everything, Lord, and including our infirmities, Lord. And uh, Lord, we ask you to just be with us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Save my soul. Amen. Uh, Fred, what'd you do with that towel, Fred? Oh, never mind. I'll put this on something. There we go. They're going to put in the new carpet uh, Thursday. Okay, so the new carpet will be in. You paid for. Happy birthday, Jesus. Uh, it'll, they'll be putting it in Thursday. Wednesday, if you got. <laughs> So if you're here on Wednesday night, if you guys can help us move the chair, move everything. We're going to have to move everything out of the auditorium, including that table back there. I don't know. We're going to have to engineer that somehow. we got some dollies that will probably we'll put that on and get it out there. But everything has to be out of my office and this auditorium, okay? okay. Don't fail. Don't fail in doing that, okay? Don't quit. Everybody in this room this morning, if, you, if your heart's beating, you're, you're, you, know, you fail, okay? There are days when a cook fails with a meal, okay? There are days when a preacher uh, fails with his message, okay? 
There are days athletes fail with uh, running the football or hitting the baseball or shooting the basketball. Uh, everybody uh, in their life fails, okay? Um, now, you're going to have to pardon me because uh, this is just a side note. My, my eyes are going quick. I don't know if I, I'm going to go see the Lord next week or what, but my eyes, I can't hardly see anything. That's why I asked for Mark. I'm Pat. Have you ever, who's in here past the reading glasses stage? You got to get the, yeah, I think I'm there. I think it just happened this morning, okay? Uh, but forgive me if I have to go like this, okay? Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, but it's not failing, because everybody fails. It's not failing that causes defeat, right? Um, it, it's, it's what you do with your failure that either causes defeat or you have a victory. What do you do with your failure? Because everybody, ever, or your failings, because everybody fails. I fail, you fail. A one round in a fight that a boxer loses does not have him, does not make him lose the bout, okay? Uh, because he gets knocked down in a round Okay, doesn't mean he's knocked out and loses. No, he gets back up. He gets in his corner, gets some water in his face, whatever, and goes back out there. Um, I've been, in this job I have as a pastor, I've seen many people, okay, fail. They've seen me fail. But you have never seen me quit as far as, hello. But I've seen a lot of people quit at whatever they're doing. Um, seen a lot of people quit and then they become failures because they don't get back up and they feel sorry for themselves on and on and on okay uh, look I got news for you nobody feels sorry for you really Come on, George. they'll say that and, and, we, and we sort of mean it we feel sorry for you because we don't want to see anybody suffer but we got our own stuff we got to deal with we got our own brats I mean our kids and our grandkids and our our, our family and our junior church kids and our life and our failure and our stuff we're working on. Don't count on a lot of people feeling sorry for you. Even if they do, what good does that do you? Amen. Not much. Not much. Um, I'm talking to someone this morning who's thinking about throwing in the towel. I don't know who you are. Okay, we don't know, need to know who you are. God knows who you are, and God's here to love you and help you and help you not throw in the towel. None of us have ever escaped uh, the thing of failing. Sometimes after I preach, I go home and I feel like I've, I've laid an egg, man. That no, but I didn't get my, the main thing is when I feel like I fail a message, it's not that you didn't listen, it feels, it's just that I didn't get the truth across the way I wanted it across. You ever talk to your kids or talk to your husband or and feel like you wanted to say something important but you just couldn't get it across the way you think it should be? That's the way I feel like I fail sometimes. It's, but it's inevitable. We are creatures of the dust. We are going to fail. Amen. And everybody has to fail. But don't miss this. Nobody has to be a failure, right? Amen. Okay. Failing is the ingredient in which failures are made. But failing is also an ingredient in which success is made. Amen. You'll never find anybody that's a success that hasn't failed. Right. Maybe, maybe uh, umpteen times, okay? Uh, the presidents that have become president, they fail all kinds of times. Great ath uh, athletes, football stars, you name it, okay? I don't care who they are, they've failed before. Preachers, they've failed before they've had any success. So it's up to you. If you could take your failures and, and tuck, you know, if you want to take your failures and tuck your tail and run and quit, that's up to you. Not many, no, nobody's going nobody's to stop you, okay? But this life is too long to be miserable. Come on. 70 years is a long time. Finish whatever you started. And that's, you know, Paul felt the same way. Lord, I can't make it. You're going to take this thing away. And the Lord said, no, my grace is sufficient. Just like she sang. My grace is sufficient. Paul said, yes, sir. Okay, I'll go on. Even though he's in pain. Even though, you know, uh, <laughs> whatever it was, it was a, 
on his eyesight or whatever it was, he, he kept going. And I'm here to encourage you this morning. If you fail, we still love you. God still loves you. If you end up a failure, guess what? God still loves you and we still love you. But that's not the point. Okay, if you're a Christian, you should love anybody that, that does, it fails at anything, that's hurting anytime. No matter how bad they are, no matter how many times they quit, we should love them. That doesn't help the person. Okay? Don't quit. Keep going. Finish whatever you have started. There's been many things I've started and I quit. Okay? I'm not proud of it. But I got back up and kept going. Okay? Just kept going. There's been many a times that Julie has acted a fool. I just kept going. I prayed for her. <laughs> well, not many, okay? It was more on my side that she had to keep going. But guess what? God has something for everyone, something unique. Because, David, you're uniquely made. You're, you're wonderfully and fearfully made. Okay, Roy, you're wonderful. You're unique. There's only one Ray. No, I'm just kidding. There's only one Roy. Okay. Man, my wife listened to the message and said, did you know you called Roy Ray? I said, yeah, I know, I know. But, yeah, there's only one Ray, that's for sure. There's only one uh, Larry, one beard like that. One Lenny. One Lenny. Uh, so, I, I don't want you, and God doesn't want you to throw in the towel. God has something unique for you to do. And nobody can do that but you. God has somebody for you to help uniquely. For you. Only you can help. There are people I can help. I go out and look for people to help every day of my life just about. Okay? My, my day's off Monday. But we go out and look for people we can help Monday. Because I, what am I going to do at the house? Okay? What am I going to do? Julie got rid of the direct TV. So I don't have anything. No NFL network. No none of that. So what do I do? That gets old after a while. Okay, and chopping wood, okay, we got wood up to our necks, okay. Uh, yeah, find somebody to help. That's why you're still here, okay. Get you a bag of candy and go. You should have seen the kids coming from off that bus. I was out there with a bag of candy giving them, man, they, they, their eyes lit up, okay. I don't know if they get any from anywhere, but it didn't seem like it, okay. Uh, you know what that says when you give somebody a piece of candy? That mean you know that that could mean the world to them. You don't know. That's better than than you know throwing water in their face. That's better than not doing anything at all. Stop whining. Get you a bag of candy and go out and give some people some candy. Help somebody. Do something. Don't quit. Don't quit. You're not going to accomplish anything by quitting. There's a good reason God made you. God doesn't make any mistakes. He's God, okay? He doesn't sin. He doesn't make any mistakes. He's not like us, okay? He made you for a reason. You're an original, okay? You are an original. I forgot that saying I said, or I found from NFL Films. You are an original. Oh, you are an original. Stop acting like a copy. Amen. Ooh, I like that. I like that. See, I got the coach in there, okay? Uh, but God has a need uh, a need for you to find the person he had for you to help. That's why you're still here, Amen. okay? Uh, you're, you, you should have a need that's unfulfilled. You should, that's what a purpose is, okay? You should have something that's unfulfilled. That's why you shouldn't quit. You should have a purpose, something, a goal, something that you want to do. What is it, okay? It doesn't have to be in the church, okay? It could be something at work, something at school, uh, but God has left you here for a reason. Who's saved? Who's saved? Amen. Okay, God has a reason for everybody to raise their hand. Okay? If you're not saved, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay? If you're not saved, we can take care of that. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. When we give the invitation, you can come down here, and I'll show you in the Bible, and you can ask the Lord to save you. Okay? So until you do that, none of this means anything. Because you can help everybody like Sister Teresa in the world and still die and go to hell. Because you're counting on being good. Okay? It's Jesus. You can't add anything to what he did. 
Jesus plus nothing. Somebody shout amen. amen. So God has a need for you not to quit. God doesn't want you to quit. He made you for a reason. He made me for a reason. God wanted a you in this world. And I don't know. <laughs> I look at some of you, I don't know why, but he had, no. Uh, but he did. And, and there's nobody like you in this world. And you are made, guess what, in the image of God. Amen. Okay? In the image of God. You are, you are a part of God's plan, man. Stop, having, stop looking at, having that sourpuss look on your face and walking around. You are made for a purpose, man. Tighten your chin strap. Stop whining so much. When you whine, go in your car, go in your room, go over, go over where, go in Walmart bathroom and whine. But when you come out, come out with a smile on your face. <laughs> Hi, where are the pickles? You know where the pickles are? Man, Walmart, uh, I'm so confused every time. I'm, I'm, as, I'm, I'm as confused as a mosquito in a stinking mannequin, mannequin factory because they switch everything. Did you, did you hear my joke? Let me back up. Did, did you joke? Did you hear? Well, I, I'm as confused as a mosquito in a mannequin factory. Because my Walmart I go to, they switch everything. Why do they do that? I guess they need a purpose to do something. Okay? But that rocks my world. Okay? Don't do that to me. So... Anyway, man, I thought my joke would go over a lot better than that. Now, now I'm lost. Uh, but God has created you and you and you and you, okay, for a purpose, okay? God created everybody for a specific purpose, okay, and programmed you, okay, to do his will on earth. You got to find that too, okay? Uh, and it's not the will of God that anybody in this world should be a failure. He didn't make you to be, to be a failure. He knew you were going to fail at times, okay? Uh, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us, okay? I could do all things through Christ which strengthens me. All things are possible to him that believe. I'm not talking about Norman Vincent Peale's book, The Power of Positive Thinking, and all that junk. I wouldn't give a dime for all the books he wrote. Okay, he was anti-God and everything else. Okay, I'm talking about the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit of God getting on your life and you walking with God and going out and finding your purpose. Yeah, you're going to fail. Yeah, you're going to have your infirmities, but get back up. Amen. Let your wife hold you. Let your wife hug you, whatever, kiss you, whatever. Get back out there and go for God, man. The world's dying and going to hell, and these Christian people that are going to do something, man, instead of whining and complain about people coming over the border, yeah, I don't like it either, but hey, make some lemonade out of lemons, will you? Go find some, some of the people and lead them to Christ. Learn Spanish if you have to, or take somebody who speaks Spanish and lead them to Christ. Amen. Make a difference in this lost and dying world instead of complaining. I know I'm guilty too. I do it. <clears throat> Take your weakness and make your strengths out of them. Okay? My power is the strongest in weakness, the Bible says. Okay? Uh, I take, God says, I'll take your weakness and I'll give you power. You, you just trust me. I know you're weak. Okay? But that's, that's, I'll take your infirmities and I'll make something out of it. Because you're not trusting yourself, you're trusting me. Hello? Amen. You're going to fail in your, in your attempt to do anything. Amen. But with Jesus, he can't fail. Come on. Man, I'm bummed out about that joke. <laughs> Failing is a part of training for success. Amen. You know, it doesn't take Einstein to come up with these things, okay? That's, you know that. Okay, that's part of it. That's part of the failings. You've got to go through it. All right? Just like I had a bad joke. i got to go. I'm going to keep going. I'm not quitting. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was, well, anyway. 
stinking people. You don't understand. The mosquito's looking for blood. He hits a mannequin. He looks like a human. What's going on? I'm confused. <laughs> now you get it. Okay. <clears throat> First time I learned to rent, ride a bike, I was six years old. Six years old. And, uh, of course, the town I grew up in in Texas, it's all dirt roads. So I, was, I learned to ride right off the bat. I learned pretty quick, okay? And I was getting cocky and going over little, little, you know, hills and everything. And my mom was sitting there drinking coffee out in the front. I could still see it, really, uh, uh, going, going down the road. And I said, look, Mom, no hands. I learned to ride. First day, no hands. Two chipped two teeth later and a bunch of strawberries after that. But I got back up, okay, and kept doing, you know, trying to do more tricks and everything else. Adam was the same way, our youngest boy, okay. He, uh, his famous line was, can I do it again? Because he, fa he, he crashed so many times. He was like Evil Knievel. <laughs> In fact, his name was, and we named him Amtrak. He was a train wreck. He was. <laughs> that was one of his names, Amtrak. And he'd hit mailboxes. He'd hit, he hit uh, parked cars. I mean, head on sometimes. He'd get, I go, oh, man. We don't have insurance. I wasn't worried about him because he'd get up and go, can I do it again? Can I do it again? <laughs> sure. Okay. Once I, let me put this mailbox back up. And you can do it again. Okay. There are two things that I trust in heaven won't be there. That's teaching a child how to ride a bicycle and teaching a teenager how to drive. Oh, I finally had to give Aaron because I didn't have much patience. I do now, but back then I didn't have a lot of patience. And uh, I finally just, uh, find, with Sarah, Sarah was the worst. And Julie, she was watching, you know. And I said, you take this girl, okay? I don't know why we even teach women how to drive or ride a bicycle anyway. Come on. I'd rather, I'd rather go through half of the tribulation than to teach a girl how to ride a bicycle. That's a woman's job. And, uh, and she's, she's got more tickets than any of us already. Uh, but Adam couldn't get the concept. You know, what the problem is, he couldn't get the concept of speed brings stability. The faster you go, the more stable you are. The slower you are, the more wobbly, right? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But he would crack. That's, that's a message right there. Full speed ahead, the more stable you are. Amen? But that's the truth. Okay, but he would crash all the time. He'd get up bleeding or whatever, uh, you know, bloody lip. Can I do it again? Can I? And that's what we need to do. Can I do it again? Are you a can I do it again person? Preacher, I failed, but can I do it again? I know I failed as a Sunday school. I know I failed on the bus route. I know I failed this. I know I failed that. My marriage is not, I've, I've, I've failed on my marriage. Can I do it again? Let's get together. Can I do it again? Let's talk it over. Can I do it again? That's my do it again, buddy. I leave this platform sometimes. I feel like I completely failed. And you do too in whatever you do. But I say to myself, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to tell another joke and maybe they'll laugh. But if you don't laugh, I'm going to do it again. I thought that was the best joke I've ever told in 24 years and you just stood there and looked at me. How do you make that? How do you think that makes me feel? But I'm going to do it again. That's right. <laughs> Realize you will fail, but you don't have to be a what? Failure. Failure. Uh, I remember when our piano player left years ago when we just started. They got, they were in the military and they had, they got uh, deployed somewhere else. And uh, so Julie had to start learning how to play the piano again. She hadn't played for a long time and oh Lord, it was terrible. I was watching a football game and the announcer said, what is that noise? <laughs> we had a dog named Super Dog, and he, he was trying to go out the doggy door, which he was too big for. He would just stick his head out the door when she was playing, practicing. 
It was 10 degrees outside, and my boy said, can we go out and play basketball, Dad? It was, it was horrific, because she, but guess what? She told herself, can I do it again? Can I do it again? And now you got a concert pianist, amen? Yeah. <clears throat> you guys were mad at me, weren't you, talking to Julie like that? Stand up, honey. They want to give you an applause. <laughs> you don't have to be a failure, okay? You don't have to be a failure. I mean, folks, you just, you just get up and you do it again. I know it's not easy. Uh, you know, so take eating, for example. Eating. Some of us are, are, are bigger successes than others. <laughs> we... Me and Joseph were out on, down on Frio Street, Friday or whenever it was. We were knocking on doors, and we, this lady came down the sidewalk. I am not joking, Frank. Her, this, uh, her, she was so big. Her shadow must have weighed 10 pounds. A little bit better. The meter was about right there. <laughs> I don't care what you like. I'm telling them, amen. <laughs> we came, we moved to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And uh, we just got the furniture in. The, the, the boys were in diapers. And uh, me and Julie are putting the bed together. And we hadn't heard from the boys. And I said, where are they? What are they doing? We go in the front room. They're looking out the window. We had a little dog then, and guess what? They're eating the dog poop. I mean, like corn on the cob. They're sitting there looking out the, yeah. Some people fail in eating, okay? But that, oh, my boys are going to be mad. I told you that one. Here's one, okay? Uh, look, you didn't learn to go to the bathroom, to go potty right off the bat. You had to do it again and again and again and again, right? Hello? We were buying a washer and dryer one time. I think it was in Fort Bragg. Again, that was a cursed city, man, for us. We're at Fort Bragg, Mark Z, and we're at the counter, and Aaron's in diapers. And we turn around. Oh, the guy runs out of front. He says, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you. Help us what? They turn around, and Aaron has squatted right in the middle of the showroom <laughs> and did his business right there. That guy came out and helped us, you know, the, the little broom and the thing. <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not good at it at first, okay? But you got to get back up. You got to go in there and learn what to do, okay? You got to do it again, do it again. Um, but anyway, you don't like those illustrations. You didn't like my joke, so I don't care. <clears throat> so thank God we have some people who fail, but they keep on going. Otherwise, everybody going to the bathroom all over the place. Amen? <laughs> they, we wouldn't have anybody in church. We wouldn't have any preachers preaching. We wouldn't have any soul winners out there winning people to Christ. You are going to fail. But do you get back up? Do you say, let's do it again? And eventually, you'll do it right. My strength is made perfect in weakness, the Bible says. Okay? Uh, Julie was terrible on the piano. She'll tell you. She'll be able to, But man... She can play now. What would we do without her? Amen. And it came through doing it again and again and again and again. Perhaps you've been going through failure after failure. Perhaps you feel like you, you can't, you know, you can't do no good. Nothing ever turns out for you. But ladies and gentlemen, failing is an ingredient for your success. You have to realize that. And at the time, you're, you're failing. You don't, you're not going to realize it. You're not, you're not, like I said before, you're not going to, hoo-hoo, yay, I got this disease. I, I lost my job. No, but you just got to tighten the old chin strap, whine a little bit about it, whatever you got to do, curl up like a baby for a while. Get outside and go, though. Keep going. Let me give you some things. I don't have a watch on. 
I don't know how much time, the red light's not on, but I'll go quick. You ready? I, I don't want to just preach on it and not give you something. Remember, failing is not failure. It's not failure. It, it, it is not the end game, okay? Uh, Edmund Cook said this, what is failure? It's only a spur to the one who receives right. It makes the spirit within him stir to go in one more time and fight. And that's true. That's what failing does. It should do that for you. It should, man, I can't believe I failed. That, I missed that time, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it this time. Amen. Ted Bonnet, who's in heaven now, was a national champion. National. He's on ESPN all the time back in the 80s and 90s. Okay? Why? And it was terrible. He said his, his dad was a great shot, but he was a terrible one when he was growing up. He, his dad had to teach him how to shoot. I went hunting with him. I know. He got a deer with a 45. Here I am, me and Aaron, with this big old 30 odd six. We didn't get nothing, but he shot a deer with a 45. You got to get close, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay? But he kept doing it and doing it and doing it. It's, it's, he's not, he wasn't a failure, although he failed many times. He was, a crack, he was a crack shot. I've got to hurry, okay? That light's coming on any time. <laughs> Failing is only a temporary setback, right? A temporary setback, okay? This, this life, if you haven't noticed, is temporary. Yeah. Oh, everything you do is temporary, yeah. okay? The only things you do for Christ are the ones that are eternal, the rewards that you'll be given by him. The things you do for Christ. Are you doing anything for Christ? Because fa if, you, if your failings, they're, they're temporary. Okay? They're temporary. They're in the past. Okay? Don't quit. Don't quit. Look, I hate to say this. It sounds mean. We love. Uh, look, I, I spend time with quitters all the time. I do. I call them on the phone. I try to pick them up. I encourage them. That's my job. But the, the bottom line is we got a job to do. Amen. And we need people to do it. Quitters are as useless as a glass hammer. Amen. You can't do anything with them. They quit. Thought that was funny too. <laughs> Scratch that one. Julie, when I say these, either laugh or don't laugh. She laughed. Oh, that's good, preacher. That's good, Keith. That's good. Okay, I'll throw that one in there. Just tell me if they stink or not. Please make me look like a fool, okay? Uh, let's go, let's go. Uh, for there have, have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. This life is temporary. Don't worry. You fail, I fail, your mom fails, your dad fails, all God's children fail. But you don't have to be a failure. It's not a disgrace to fail unless you make it the last chapter in the book. Look, if, you, if this is it, and you fail, and you give up, and you go home, and you take your little ball, and you go home, and you quit, and you make, that's it, and you don't come back, and you don't try again, then you are a failure. Then you are a failure. Yeah. Don't make it the last chapter in your book, okay? Uh, here's one. If you got what it takes, you'll get back up again. Yeah. Do you have what it takes? <laughs> For a just man falls seven times. And rises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Okay? Most people who quit, let's take people who quit church. They quit church, you know how their life goes? It doesn't go good. They get divorced, their kids go, go bad, everything else, because they quit church. They fall into mischief. Okay? But the righteous get back up seven times, they keep going. Oh, the preacher preached at me. Well, whoopee. Oh, join the club. Okay? You're, you identified yourself. I didn't mention your name. So you identified yourself. Obviously, you have the problem that I preached about. Don't get all mad about it. Okay? Get up and do it again. Amen. Get up and do it again. Or stop what you're doing. Stop failing. Stop, you know, hello. Stop looking at pornography. Stop drinking. Stop, you know, whatever you're doing. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger. Amen. I got enough people mad at me. Keep your eye on the big goal. Oh, keep your eye on the big goal. And the big goal is getting people to heaven. 
is for you, for your family to turn out right, for your kids to serve God, for your marriage to, to, to be at least good enough where you're going to church together and you're talking and you know what I mean? It's not going to be perfect, okay? Uh, these women nowadays, you just, you just got to put up with them. It's the other way around, isn't it? Okay, yeah. First time you said amen today, okay. <laughs> Somebody said this. I didn't, I didn't come up with this one. Give me a stock clerk with a goal, and I'll give you a man who will make history. Give me a man without a goal, and I'll give you a stock clerk. Do you have any goals? Do you have any purpose? Okay. You don't. If you quit, you can't, okay? You can't. Philippians 3.13, brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Okay? I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The big goal is to serve God. Amen. To serve God. He doesn't look back. Paul said, I don't look back. I've failed many times. I used to kill believers. So I am the chief. That's why he said he's the chief of sinners. He's coming to church right now and put people in prison and kill them. He'd come into a church just like this. It wasn't in a building. It's probably in a, a house or a cave or whatever because they were underground because people would come and kill them. And look at us, okay? The preacher said a bad joke. Oh, wow, I feel sorry for you. Hello? Oh, the red light just came on. Uh-oh. Now, let me just give me these things and I'll quit. If you fail to meet your goal in one area, get yourself another goal. No big deal. P uh, plenty of people do it. Okay? I, I, was, I tried to be an Arizona patrolman, and I was, the guy told me I was one away. I was one off the list. Remember that? We were so disappointed. Okay? Uh, and I wouldn't be here right now if I was an Arizona. I failed it with, that, with that. Okay? It's right when they started hiring women. I had to have hire so many women. I don't think I have anything against women, but what do you call that when you hire because you've got to have so many this and that? That's what the guy, yeah, he told me that. That's not right. That's not right. You hire people because they can do the job. Right. Not because of the color of their skin or what their gender is. That's why our, our nation's in a mess. It is. A bunch of morons. But if you fail to meet your goal in one area, get yourself another goal. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. That's what Satan wants you, to quit so he can sift you like wheat. You can't do anything. Quitting, he loves quitters. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Aren't you glad Jesus prays for you, Sylvia, Mata? Where would you be if Jesus didn't pray for you? Amen. The Holy Spirit didn't intercede while you prayed. We don't know what to pray for. We don't know what we should be praying for. Amen. But the Holy Spirit does. Yes. And He intercedes for us. Thank God. In the rottenest apple, too rotten to be eaten, there still remain seeds that can produce more apples. Amen. Johnny Appleseed said that. I'm <laughs> just kidding you, man. That was funny. That's supposed to be funny. Johnny Appleseed was not a person, dude. Good night. I am going home a failure. Look, don't feel like you can't be used just because you fail at something. God doesn't make failures. We make, we make failures when we quit. God loves you, and he has a plan for your life, okay? I know I sounded like a coach talking to a football team, but that's really what we are. We try to encourage you because everybody is thinking about quitting something. Maybe it's something big like a marriage. Maybe it's quitting serving Jesus and doing your own thing. I don't know what it is, but you and God know, all right? Whatever it is. Maybe it's quitting your, quitting your job. It's quitting school whatever it is, but you don't have to, okay? Um, it, you know, quitting doesn't make you, a, failing doesn't make you a failure. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. 